In Fulton County, you can drive through the rural area between Apava, Table Grove, and Bernadotte and see nothing but typical Illinois countryside. What you don't see is the history. Where the tall grass now grows, there used to be a bustling community called Camp Ellis. During World War II, as World War II was getting started, uh, the United States didn't have a place to train people to be support people for the war. For three years, from 1942 to the winter of 1945, this was a home to Camp Ellis, a United States training center and POW camp. Here are just a few of the things you could find here. There were more than 70,000 soldiers and volunteers being trained. Over 2,000 buildings, including libraries, four gymnasiums, chapels, and an airport, but most impressive was the large state-of-the-art hospital. It was a 1,500-bed hospital. It was probably the largest hospital at the time in the country, and that could be arguable, I think, uh, but probably was the largest. It, uh, it was probably larger than any one state, downstate hospital in Illinois is today. To make way for this modern camp, local farmers had to make sacrifices. 150 families, including the families of Bernadotte, and uh, they, the people from the government came around with a sheet of paper that had your name on it and the uh, number of, uh, uh, the amount of money at the bottom that you're going to get for your land. And the sheet of paper also says that you have to be gone in 30 days. You can take your house, your barn, your cows, your corn, anything that belongs to you, you can take with you. All we want is the dirt, but you have to be gone in 30 days. That made a lot of people unhappy, but there were more people who were tickled to death because they had jobs. Julie Turstrip's family was one of the families that had to relocate very quickly. So they had been here over a hundred years at the time that uh, they lost the land to the camp. Um, but they were never angry or bitter about it. Um, my dad was seven and my uncle would have been 10 at the time. And my grandparents always said, well, our boys weren't old enough to serve, our nephews were, but it was our way to help the war effort. Those families gave up their land so that people could be trained in many fields, including engineering, bridge building, nursing, and other support people for the soldiers that would help in our World War II efforts. Oh, the pictures that I showed you of the quartermasters are, uh, there are three guys in one foxhole and they dig a little trench on the outside, line it with a pup tent, and they're mixing bread dough. And then the other picture, and these two pictures were actually taking out there they were done during the training. And uh, three other guys have dug a hole in the side of the hill and they put a fire in that hole and they're baking bread in the hole. And uh, it, that's kind of an amazing thing when you look at the pictures. And what made it even more amazing to me was that uh, shortly after I got the pictures and I was reading about it, I read that the quartermasters trained at Camp Ellis, they went both to uh, the Pacific and to Europe and it was estimated they baked 91 million loaves of bread after they left Camp Ellis. These three over on this side, this is father, mother, and son. Uh, son Clifford Butler was in World War II, and this uniform is actually in that picture, and it's at the hospital oh, wow. in, in the camp. It also became an internment camp for prisoners of war. They put them on empty ships and they came back to the United States. Then after they got here, we didn't have any place to put them either. So uh, they did bring them to Camp Ellis. All of the buildings were moved out, most of them sold, uh, some of them were moved uh, as a whole building, but a lot of them just torn down and used as material. Uh, they dug up all the water system, 
Uh, all of the uh, telephone communication system was taken down and used somewhere else. Today, little is left to mark the place where 125,000 servicemen were trained and 5,000 prisoners of war were held. Just two water towers and a heavily graffitied rifle range. But the lessons from history have not been forgotten. Um, I think it's important for a community to understand where they came from and to see what they did uh, to contribute to the war effort.